Hi, this is Larry Hatch, and I'm a taxonomist with cultivar.org. And today's topic is pilea, a great group of houseplants. And we're going to be talking about understanding the cultivars and a few of the species as well. Uh, I'm just going to use pictures that I have from my own collection and others that have been given to us. And we're going to try to bring a little clarity to this genus. It's a difficult genus, and there's a lot of species floating around out there. Um, that are frankly not identified as to their wild species specific name uh, so we're going to present them to the best of our ability as we know them currently and sometimes these will be provisional names and um, just bring a little clarity of the nomenclature as far as we can get to it um, and uh, this is all from cultivar.org we have a very complete uh, houseplant encyclopedia there that's free called Hatches Interior Plants and it's one I've written over 35 years and you can just click on it at cultivar.org and it's yours free to look at no sign up, no passwords, no nothing, it's all just just look at it um, and we're trying to stabilize the nomenclature of many genera including Pilea so without further ado let's get started uh, the first plant is one that does not have a name um, we got it um, back last August uh, from Steve's Leaves and they're great at introducing a lot of new and rare species that don't have all the names um, knocked down. I have a kind of a general idea some of the species it could be but I don't want to go into that because then somebody will pick up on saying that Larry Hatch Taxonomist said it's this and I really don't know. Uh, we're just They're just calling it Pilea Species Burgundy on. It's a really beautiful leaf. It's a broadly ovate leaf with these huge crenate, that means rounded teeth, um, almost coleus like in shape. And the great thing is, is the back of the leaves are rich, dark burgundy, and that translates through the thin leaf to give it a dark green appearance. It's a really beautiful plant. Uh, it is kind of strong and vigorous. It reminded me again of like, kind of like a coleus for vigor. Um, and it, it's a good plant, and someday we'll we'll know which of the species it really is, and and give it a perhaps a better name. Um, and again, if you don't catch all of this, you can go to our Pilea file uh, at cultivar.org and take a look at these things. Our next species is Pilea cadirii, um, and there's basically three cultivars that we know of it. Uh, the typical species has leaves that are about I don't know, roughly, I don't know, maybe eight centimeters, six, six to ten centimeters long. Uh, there's a dwarf compact form called Minima that has much smaller leaves that are four to five centimeters. I've seen things called Minima that are compact, but they don't have the small leaf. So based on our literature, um, we would have to say those are not the right thing. Uh, the, the true Minima has a four to five centimeter leaf, very small leaf. Um, and then there's Patty's Gold, which Glasshouse Works has been selling since 1988. Um, it's mottled yellow and it um, uh, the yellow marks on it become cream and it has the same typical uh, silver overlays. It came from a lady named Patty Lee. Uh, the plant that we're showing here is a variegated form of Kadirii. Uh, that, that you can get. Um, I, I got one back in 2018 at a local nursery and it's, so, it's sold in the trade as variegata, elbow variegata, variegated, that sort of thing. Uh, Latin names are not allowed after 1959 unless published before 1959. Um, so this thing need, needed um, a vernacular or common, not common name, a vernacular name uh, so we named it cream theme um, it has been called variegated which is you know a vernacular word but the cultivated codes forbid names like that because they'll be applied to many different things over many years and and the code you know uh, prohibits common adjectives you know like green blue variegated yellow because uh, obviously they're going to get confused um, so we, we thought we'd call it cream theme and it's been published by us for some years and here's a typical picture not all the plants have as much marking on this 
and um, if you want to say about Patty's Gold, um, it's not boldly sectored in yellow like this. It's more of a suffused light sectoring. And Glasshouse Works will tell you that it sometimes comes and goes. Uh, cream theme is definitely a brighter thing. Uh, our next group of species, and a uh, species called of ours, is Pilea depressa, known as the baby tears. Uh, there's many different forms of it. So the name baby tears has come to be more or less a a clone or group of clones with with one particular trait and hopefully this chart will help us straighten it out a little bit um, this is based on the plants I've grown myself over the years uh, maybe you've got some different experiences and can comment on that uh, below uh, the, the thing called baby tears which is the species typical of gardens but not necessarily of the wild as we will find out uh, has a light colored lime green leaf above and below and the leaves are about um, 8 to 12 millimeters long um, there is a smaller leaf form they call tiny tears but not everything sold as tiny tears is different from baby tears um, there are some nurseries like Josh's frogs and a few others that sell both of them and they can differentiate between the two um, the what I am defining as tiny tears, at least on this chart, uh, for our taxonomic purposes, it has a pale green leaf lime, uh, but it's got a, a three to six uh, millimeter um, long leaf. It's, it's, it's smaller than baby tears. They, 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 do, they might overlap a little bit when you get to that six to eight millimeter range, um, but it doesn't have the big one centimeter type leaves on it with lots of teeth so the real tiny tears really is a tiny tiny leaf and um, if you care to grow both of those you can do so I've grown them side by side fortunately I didn't have a um, a digital camera back then so I did not capture those so hopefully this chart will do uh, there's become a third cultivar uh, called Sao Paulo uh, which I've got a picture of here um, I bought it as the species from a local nursery, but that's the only thing it can be is Sao Paulo, um, based on my research. Uh, and it's different, and it's got huge leaves. They're 1.2 to 2.2 centimeters long. It almost doesn't look like a Pilea depressa. There's no baby tears there. And the thing that's different about it is the upper surface is a medium to dark green, and below is very distinctly tinged a violet red to burgundy color sometimes green flushed in those colors if it doesn't get enough sun and Sao Paulo is a um, really beautiful and distinct cultivar and it grows tall uh, the plant the plant I have right now in the humidity of one of my bathrooms is uh, is, a, is a good six and a half inches tall and it does sprawl a little bit uh, but it's not as cascading as baby tears and tiny tears so it is a very different plant could even be a different species but um, I think the leaf shape is close enough again for taxonomy we need flowers and frankly a lot of these flowers don't show up um, in gardens uh, in cultivation very often so we have to just base things on the foliage morphology um, the next cultivar I want to get into uh, uh, I'm doing this out of alphabetical order, I don't know why, is Dark Mystery. Um, well, I guess you could say it, it, it is uh, in order. Um, dark Mystery is a mystery. <laughs> it's a plant that showed up um, a few years ago, uh, sold by Exotic Angel, which is uh, Costa Farms. And... Um, I did some research on it uh, with some experts in the field and they feel that it's probably um, a selection of Pilea Hitchcockii um, and I, I did some research on that and that does have a very similar leaf shape it's just not as um, dark uh, the new tips are bright and they have a kind of a burnt orange to copper tint on them over brown and the leaves quickly become this beautiful glossy 
dark brown. You know, if you ever had a pair of dark brown dress shoes that weren't quite black, but they were very glossy and very dark brown, this this is what this thing looks like. And on the underside of the leaf, it's a reticulation of kind of copper and burnt orange and medium brown shades. Uh, but it, it's so glossy, and the leaf is so beautifully serrate and long. Uh, like I say, I, we got ours in the Colovar Trials. Um, in 2017, uh, that's that's roughly when I first saw it. Now you see it everywhere in the box stores that um, Costa Farms markets to, um, but uh, we call it AFF period, meaning affinity. That means uh, that's taxonomy speak for it has an affinity to that species, but we're not really placing it there yet. It's a, sort of like a kind of a maybe sort of situation. Um, as we would get into that. Um, our next plant is one I recently got. I had grown it a number of years ago, and I got it from Steve's Leaves again. Um, it's the large lime green, big-bladed form of Pilea grandifolia. Um, it, I think it's called a crocodile plant because it's got a texture of that and sort of looks like a crocodile head. Um, I've seen plants of it in collections where the leaves are fairly small, but when you get a young, vigorous plant, um, uh, the leaves will be up to 8 inches long. They can be really huge, and they're very pale and lime green. Um, one thing that's interesting about it is there are cultivars of it. Um, and the one that I know is called Coral, or also known as Pilea grandis superba. It's got a much darker leaf. Uh, than this this typical lime green one, um, and the flowers are darker colored. They're a dark coral pink to pinkish copper, very showy. Uh, th this lime green one uh, has kind of a light to medium pink flower, whereas the coral has a very richly colored leaf and flower. Uh, that that was the earliest I can trace that as to Old Glasshouse Works catalog of 1988 probably known before that um, but anyway uh, there's some other forms of it that I have yet to document but we can probably update this video at some point um, our next plant is Pilea in Valucrata Moon Valley and people sell it as Mollus even Spruciana they, they sell it as under everything as near as we can determine it is a pretty typical clone of Pilea and Valucrata. Uh, some of you may disagree with me on that, but uh, when I look at the, some botanical herbarium specimens and some wild um, photos, it, it does seem to match. So unless people are making some identification issues um, with these specimens, um, I, I feel comfortable with Pilea and Valucrata. And it, it's a very distinct plant, highly textured, um, and uh, hopefully it, it varies amount in the amount of the dark purplish blackish even pigment in the center of the leaf that varies with light conditions a lot um, and I don't see any justification right now for different color forms of it um, our next plant is Pilea liban libanensis silver sprinkles and it's usually sold as Pilea glauca but I'm told by the people at Kew uh, Gardens and one of our sources is plantsoftheworldonline.org uh, it comes with Kew Gardens is the uh, most authoritative botanical garden collection of taxonomists in the world um, and they grow over 30,000 different plants live uh, they've been doing this tropical plant taxonomy ever since the tropics were opened and they've been doing it for hundreds of years literally um, they say since the 1600s actually um, but some of that's a little murky um, it was basically the first botanical garden in London put it that way so it's pretty old and uh, they tell us that the name is Libanensis um, for Lebanon actually um, there are allegedly numbers of cultivars of the Libanensis. Um, 
This one here called Silver Sprinkles seems to be more of a, a finely modeled uh, silvery blue color. Uh, there's a thing called Blue Tears, Baby Blue Tears, Aquamarine. To me, they all seem, and Blue Angel, they all seem to be the same thing, more or less. <laughs> so, um, to me, Baby Blue Tears, Blue Tears, Aquamarine are all sort of the same thing. I think silver sprinkles may prove to be similar. Uh, when I grow them side by side, it's really hard to um, acclimatize them so that plants from different sources can be compared. Uh, it's it's so very hard to do that. Um, you got to have the same soil, the same pots, the same light. It's really hard to do that. So if any of you have an opinion on how many cultivars we have of this thing. Um, Hertz claims that their Blue Angel has darker red stems than typical. Uh, Josh's Frog sells a very red stemmed form uh, called Red Stem Tears. So possibly the Blue Angel and the Red Stem Tears do have a redder stem. Um, that, that's a good possibility because the plants that I've grown as Blue Tears or Silver Sprinkle have only um, a reddish um, or kind of bronzes tins to the stem. Again, that's going to depend on light conditions, vigor of the plant. So I don't know if any of you have ever grown more than one of these under the exact same conditions, you know, same pot, same soil, same light, uh, what do we call same, same cultural condition trials. Um, let, let me know because these are, these are something that sort of needs to be sorted out a little bit better. Um, let's see here. Our next plant is Pilea microphylla summer snow. Um, and it's 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 a variegated form of the popular species. Uh, usually sold as variegated, but again, as far as we know, that was not published before 1959. So um, people like Logies and others use the name summer snow, which is valid. Um, the leaves, the shoots are tipped white and mottled white up to about 100% of the leaf. Um, and in some plants with a lot of light, those are pink tips. And they gradually become more and more more green. It's what we call a virescent uh, mutation, meaning the chlorophyll develops slowly and it becomes green. That's what virescent means. So you end up with white or pinkish tips. Uh, that become green, and that's cool. Uh, let's see, what do we have next? I don't want to belabor this. I'm always long-winded, as you guys know. Uh, the next one I, I bought kind of by accident from a place called Magic Valley Gardens. They sold it as Plectranthus australi. So I figured it was a Plectranthus australis. Crinkle Charlie. And I said, wow, that's a crinkled version of Plectranthus australis. Well, they'd be reasonably... Uh, that would be a good guess, I guess. But um, I, I found out later that that's just a trade mistake for Pilea numularifolia. And that means coin leaf. Num you know, numismatics, num numularia means coin. Folia means leaf like a coin. And you can see these are very, very rounded, what we call suborbicular, or nearly round leaves. Uh, broadly, broadly ovate to suborbicular would be the term. Um, and it's got a nice texture to it. it it's pretty vigorous. Um, and uh, you could easily put it in the genus Plectranthus. I could, I could easily see that happening. Uh, the next species is one that's very popular. It's Pilea peperomioides. And it does look like Peperomia, particularly um, uh, Peperomia polybatria. And both of these kind of hit the houseplant market um, right away. Oh, and before I go on, this is a variegated form called mojito. The uh, regular Pilea peperomioides is more of a dark, dark, glossy green. Um, there are several variegated forms of peperomioides, and this one, mojito, is the, the first one that I came to my attention. Some of the others seem to be more splashed white, but we'll need to sort those out at some point. Um, if you guys have more than one of those and can compare them, that would be great in the comments. Um, 
The best way to tell Pilea peperomioides from Peperomia polybotria is the Peperomia polybotria actually has a teardrop, has a very extended point, whereas this Pilea has a round or obtuse apex and no point. Also, the Peperomia tends to have an erect upright stem, make, making the foliage more dense and upright, whereas this one uh, has a much shorter, smaller stems and longer petioles, so it kind of flops and looks more open. But the leaf apex uh, is the best way to tell the two apart uh, over time uh, reliably. And again, you know, if you have flowers, that's even the best of everything. Um, so, let's see here. Um, our next plant it's belonged to the group Pilea pubescens. Um, and uh, there's a variety called Argentia that has um, more silver on it than the species typical. It's not all silver. Uh, it's mostly silver. That's Argentia. Uh, there's one called Silver Cloud, which uh, Glass House Works sells as Libmania or Silver Libmania Silver Cloud. That's about 98 to 100 percent overlaid in silver. Uh, I did some research and I was like, I don't think this Libmania is, is is a valid botanical name, at least for variety. And I found out that Pilea pubescens, the botanical author. Uh, is Dr. Liebman. So somebody got Pilea pubescens author Liebman confused with Liebmanii. <laughs> so silver cloud um, can stand by itself. It doesn't need the Liebmanii. In fact, it would be invalid to say so. And as I think a lot of people have noted, silver cloud being mostly, if not all, silver is very similar to this plant we have here called Ellen, uh, which tends to be sold as that in the terrarium community. Um, I, I think they are the same or a very similar mutation. Um, Ellen may in fact be from Spruciana. I'm not convinced it's a pubescence, but for now, uh, for now we're going to say Argentia is 60 to 80 percent silver. Silver Cloud and Ellen are 98 to 100 percent silver, possibly the same plant. So I'll just leave it at that. Our next plant is another one of the mysteries. Um, it has been sold as Pilea spruciana silver tree, and we'll get to the real silver tree later on. Uh, it is not. Um, it has also been sold as silver and bronze, which is what I'm going to call it. Um, you may notice that it looks a little bit like dark mystery, so it, it could be related to Hitchcockii, uh, but for now I'm going with Pilea silver and bronze, not Sienna silver tree or silver tree which would be invalid as two uses of the cultivar name for different species forms um, um, and um, it, it's it's got a very long blade it, it's easily separated from dark mystery in that it's not nearly as dark the new tips are more red than orange although it's maybe a reddish orange and then mature leaves are a very silvery brown to um, silvery green. They're not the dark, you know, polished brown shoe color of Dark Mystery. And I wish I had a leaf scan of it, but I don't. Um, but I think from the photographs here, you can tell the two apart pretty easily. I would be very surprised if these two didn't end up in the same species, possibly Hitchcockii. Um... So now let's get on to the Sprucianas. I think I'm doing this in the right order. It's always hard to um, to narrate from slides and then put them back together later. Anyhow, uh, there are a number of forms of Spruciana, and they go under all kinds of different names. They're sometimes sold as pubescens, but Spruciana seems to be the best name. Uh, the least known form is the one that I'm calling the green group or the green form. The word form is not allowed in a cult of our name, so green group is sort of all we're going with for now. Um, pro probably should be cloned and given a valid name. It's basically a Spruciana with this type of leaf, um, 
elliptic ovate, it's broadly elliptic ovate, uh, with lots of texture. And it's a very dark forest green, and the leaves mature to a more of a coppery green. Uh, the new growth is not copper becoming green, it's the other way around. It's dark green, dark black forest green, like Germany's black forest. And then they become more of a more of a copper green later on. Um, and it has no silver markings. That's what's very distinct about it. Um, probably the most popular form of Pilea spruciana is this one here called Norfolk. Um, and basically it starts out um, with two silver bands um, in the center. And as the leaves get much older, there's a an outer set of bands. It's not complete. It's often just a set of blocks, silver blocks. So really you could say it has four silver bands eventually uh, on the older mature leaves. And I want to compare it to the next plate I just scanned. And this is from plants that Costa um, Exotic Angel sold at <clears throat> uh, one of my local Home Depots. Uh, literally just about a month ago I got this plant. And the reason I bought it is the leaves were huge. Oh my god, they were just they were just huge. They were just um I think the largest leaf was four inches long. I've got a ruler in here to, to measure it. Um Pan Am also like Norfolk starts off with two silver bands and then it gets two outer bands that are uh incomplete and block like later on. Um I'm kind of tempted to say that Norfolk has a smaller leaf than Pan Am, but I'm not really sure because I haven't grown them together long. I'm growing them together now. Um, again, there's so many cultural things, that the soil, the vigor, the age of the plant, the light. Um, I'm trying to standardize this. Maybe I'll root some new cuttings and grow them from scratch. But my feeling is that, that I've never seen Norfolk for sale, uh, either as large or small greenhouse plants, uh, with a leaf the size of Pan Am. Um, you can see how huge these things are. Uh, easily, easily three inches to four inches long as the bigger leaves. Um, so right now I'm saying Norfolk is a smaller leaf, but the same colors as Pan Am. Um, but if, if any of you have experience otherwise, please, please put that in the comments. And again, if you can link to any supporting documentation, um, that would be great. And if you if you feel like sending us at cultivar.org some of your own scans or photographs, that would be wonderful. Uh, we can share those with the group. Uh, we have a Peperomia group going, and uh, we'd sort of like to do that with Pilea too. I'm a big fan of the group. Uh, now I told you the one silver and bronze has been sold as silver tree. This is the real silver tree, Pilea spruciana silver tree. And it's very different than Norfolk and, and Pan Am in that it has just one silver zone down the center. Uh, it's also a darker green than they are. Uh, the new growth is not as coppery as Pan Am and Norfolk. And again, it's just one silver tree. And it looks like a little kind of a little branch tree kind of a columnar silver tree in the center. Um, and this is the true silver tree based on the literature, based on reliable nurseries, based on the collectors I've talked to on my own experience as a taxonomist. This is the true silver tree. Um, now if you were to extrapolate the whole leaf being silver like this, it would look a lot like Ellen um, or Silver Cloud. So that's why some people think that Ellen and Silver Cloud belong to Spruciana and not Pubescens. Again, we don't have flowers to prove it. Uh, right now I'm leaving Silver Cloud and Ellen with Pubescens um, until we know otherwise. Um, but uh, again, if you have alternate opinions, please, uh, please present those to us uh, in the comments below. Uh, and look at our Pilea community page at cultivar.org. Uh, we appreciate that, and uh, we appreciate you subscribing. Uh, I'm going to try to do uh, houseplant videos at least once a month, 
and uh, more frequently if I can. Uh, I'm doing other plant groups, so it's not possible to do them weekly at this point. Um, and as you'll see from my page, there's other things as well. But anyway, we appreciate you subscribing. And um, I basically make videos based on the popularity, um, the number of views, the number of comments. So if something doesn't have a lot of views but a lot of comments, I, I've kind of prioritized that topic. So um, I know my Zamia one has been popular. The uh, uh, Syngonium one has been popular. So if you guys give me a little encouragement and some subscriptions and likes and comments, that really helps with the, uh, the YouTube algorithm. So, thank you.